In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gave Saints Cornelius and Cyprian to your people as diligent shepherds and valiant martyrs, grant that, through their intercession, we may be strengthened in faith and constancy and spend ourselves without reserve for the unity of the Church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. On the subject of instructions, I cannot say that you have done well in holding meetings that do you more harm than good. In the first place, I hear that when you all come together as a community, there are separate factions among you, and I half believe it, since there must no doubt be separate groups among you to distinguish those who are to be trusted. The point is, when you hold these meetings, it is not the Lord's Supper that you are eating, since when the time comes to eat, everyone is in such a hurry to start his own supper that one person goes hungry while another is getting drunk. Surely you have homes for eating and drinking in? Surely you have enough respect for the community of God not to make poor people embarrassed? What am I to say to you? Congratulate you? I cannot congratulate you on this. For this is what I received from the Lord and in turn passed on to you, that on the same night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and thanked God for it and broke it, and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this as a memorial of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this as a memorial of me. Until the Lord comes, therefore, every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are proclaiming his death. So to sum up, my dear brothers, when you meet for the meal, wait for one another. The Word of the Lord Proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. You do not ask for sacrifice and offerings, but an open year. You do not ask for holocaust and victim. Instead, here am I. Proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the scroll of the book it stands written, that I should do your will. My God, I delight in your law, in the depth of my heart. Proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Your justice I have proclaimed in the great assembly. My lips I have not sealed. You know it, O Lord. Proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. O let there be rejoicing and gladness for all who seek you. Let them ever say, The Lord is great who love your saving help. Proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Alleluia, alleluia. Make me grasp the way of your precepts, and I will muse on your wonders. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had come to the end of all, he wanted the people to hear, he went into Capernaum. A centurion there had a servant, a favorite of his, who was sick and near death. Having heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to him to ask him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, 
they pleaded earnestly with him. He deserves this of you, they said, because he is friendly towards our people. In fact, he is the one who built the synagogue. So Jesus went with them and was not very far from the house when the centurion sent word to him by some friends. Sir, he said, do not put yourself to trouble because I am not worthy to have you under my roof. And for this same reason, I did not presume to come to you myself, but give the word and let my servant be cured. For I am under authority myself and have soldiers under me. And I say to one man, go, and he goes. To another, come here, and he comes. To my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these words, he was astonished at him, and turning round, said to the crowd following him, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found faith like this. And when the messengers got back to the house, they found the servant in perfect health. The Gospel of the Lord Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in today's world, it can be easy for us to fall into routines, even when it comes to something as sacred as attending Mass. Like the Corinthians, we may sometimes approach the Eucharist without full awareness of its profound significance. St. Paul's message is a call to examine ourselves and to ensure that we are not just going through the motions, but fully engaging with the mystery and grace present in the Mass. Paul's words challenge us to ask, are we too treating Mass as just another obligation to check off our list? The Eucharist is not just a private moment, but a sacred act that calls us into deeper unity with Christ and with one another. In our modern context, there are many distractions that can lead us to attend Mass just for the sake of attending. We might find ourselves distracted by our phones, our shadows, or simply by the habit of attending without truly reflecting on what we are doing. The Mass, however, is the summit of our Christian life, where we encounter Christ in the Word and the Eucharist. It is an invitation to enter into a profound mystery, to be nourished spiritually, and to be transformed by God's grace. While in the Gospel, we see the Roman centurion, a man of great authority, humbly recognizing his unworthiness to have Jesus enter his house. Yet, his faith is so strong that he trusts in Jesus' power from a distance. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my servant will be healed. This faith is mirrored in the words we recite during Mass before receiving the Eucharist. In our Eucharistic celebration, we are called to have the same faith and humility as the centurion. We come before Christ, not because we are worthy, but because he invites us to his table out of love. But do we truly believe in Christ's power in the Eucharist? Or have we become indifferent attending Mass out of routine without reflecting on the incredible mystery of Christ's real presence in the Eucharist? In the Second Vatican Council described the Eucharist as the source and summit of Christian life. This means that Eucharist is the highest point of our spiritual life, where we encounter Christ in the most intimate way and the source from which all our actions as Christian flow. It is not a mere symbol, but the living presence of Christ, who nourishes us, unites us, and sends us out to be his body in the world. The Eucharist is not just a ritual. It is an encounter with the living God. When we approach Mass with indifference or simply as a task to complete, we miss the profound encounter that the Eucharist offers. The Eucharist invites us into a relationship with Christ, and through it, we are called to love and serve others, just as Christ loved and gave himself for us. 
our participation in the Eucharist should transform us, helping us to grow in faith, unity and love for others. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Through these mysteries which we have received, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that by the example of the martyrs, St. Cornelius and Cyprian, we may be strengthened with the fortitude of your Spirit to bear witness to the truth of the Gospel. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.